Hi, I'm Jason Rahm with Dev Central. Welcome to this episode of Lightboard Lessons, and today we're going to talk about the basics of eye rule anatomy. So we'll get this on the board. And then, you know, before we get into the specifics of eye rules, I want to talk about kind of the different languages and where, where eye rules sits. And so if we have kind of a line of what's easy for humans, easy for people and hard for computers. I'm just going to put PCs. And then what's uh, easy for PCs but hard for people. We have interpreted languages that sit here. And those are pretty easy for people. Uh, Python, uh, right, Python, Perl, Tickle, those are interpreted languages. They're pretty easy for, for people to understand. They're very hard for computers to understand. And then, kind of in the middle, you have compiled languages. And that's uh, like C, C++, you know, Java, those are compiled languages. And then, of course, you have machine languages, like assembly. And if anybody's had an assembly class, I'm sorry, I had one in college, it was brutal. Um, but you know that's that's basically you're at the zeros and the ones and and uh, and punch cards way back in the day, <laughs> you know very easy for for um, uh, computers because that's kind of really really close to their native language, um, but that's very hard for people. And so where I rules exists on this spectrum is you would think tickle it's interpreted I rules would be here, but I rules actually kind of live right here in between compiled and interpreted languages. And that's because iRules, once they're saved, they're compiled to bytecode. And not only is Tickle a very lightweight language, uh, but compiling it down to bytecode makes it very, very fast. And the reason it needs to be very, very fast is if you, if you look at uh, like analyzing a firewall log or uh, converting a uh, configuration or or parsing text on a server that doesn't have to happen quickly there's no uh, there's no immediacy to that however if you have hundreds of thousands of connections per second coming through your box uh, and and you have to uh, fire up a, a, a runtime interpreter for every single connection that comes through that's obviously going to slow your box down like crazy and so so that's why uh, everything's compiled into bytecode makes it very very fast very very light and, and so that's where iRules lives in that spectrum. So where iRules are like Tickle are things like variables, uh, you know, variables, commands, uh, you know, comments, a lot of the uh, conditionals. Uh, so conditionals like, you know, if, else, switch, those kinds of things from Tickle, the comments, you know, they all start with the, the bang, uh, you know, commands uh, like uh, put string. Now in I rules, we, we don't have put string, uh, we use the log, but, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, string commands, you know, the, the, the ones that work in Tickle, they work in I rules. Variables, we have extended that, but, uh, you know, regular local variables work just fine in, in I rules like they do in uh, Tickle. So these are ways that, that iRules are like Tickle. The ways that they're not alike is this concept of events. And basically, if you look at the way the, uh, the big IP works, is we have a connection, we have a client, and that client is gonna come down into a big IP, this client connection, and then that's gonna get passed on to a server. While it's being processed here, the TMM, the Traffic Management Microkernel, is going to inspect that traffic based upon uh, a certain level of filters. And those filters are realized for your connection based on the profiles that you have applied to your connection. And so if I don't have anything applied and I'm just going to send it through, the IP is still going to do some protocol validation. Uh, to make sure everything's legit, you know, with like DDoS stuff that's in hardware or in software, it's still going to do uh, some checking and some protocol validation, but not to the level 
as it will if you apply profiles. And so if you apply a TCP profile, now there's going to be certain attributes about TCP available to you to do something with. And the same is true if you apply an HTTP profile. Now, in the context of iRules, if you don't have HTTP profile applied, you can still get to that data if you have TCP applied because then you can do, you can collect all that TCP payload and then you can, by RFC's field offsets, you can do a binary scan and pull all that data out. Now we have an HTTP profile that, that will make it so that you don't have to do that. But, uh, but you use an HTTP profile to get at HTTP data, so things like headers um, and uh, cookies and, and uh, methods and, and all the, the HTTP protocol fields, then you can get access to uh, if you apply the HTTP profile. And then, of course, if you have an SSL profile applied, now the SSL type events are available. And so when you look at an iRule, the, 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 the syntax of the code is when. When starts an event. And so you'll have any number of events. Now when you have TCP, HTTP, and SSL profiles attached to your virtual server, that gives you access to uh, HTTP request and response events. It gives you access to client SSL handshake events. It gives you access to uh, TCP data and the client accepted event. And so you'll fill in an event here. Let's just, uh, let's do client accepted. And then the bracket here and here denotes the event. So the client accepted happens when a TCP handshake happens. So once that happens, the TMM will fire this event. And then you can do any number of things in here. If you want to log the source IP, if you want to extract something from TCP payload, you can do all of that in here. If you want to log events, uh, that happens in the context of this event. Uh, then within an iRule, you can have more events as more events fire. And so uh, we could say, because we have HTTP profile, we can do when HTTP request. And then within the get request, so if you're on the wire, you're in your browser, you go to ESPN.com, or even better, you come to devcentral.f5.com to watch this video. There's going to be a get and then, you know, whatever the URL is. So let's say video. And so when this comes in on the wire and the client handshake has already happened, the next request in, this get slash video, that's when this HTTP request event fires. And then of course you can do anything on the request side that you might do. You might say, I don't want you to go to slash video anymore and you redirect them. Or on the application server, you've made some changes and slash video isn't there anymore, but you don't want to deal with any uh, client side rewrites at this time. So then you'll just rewrite that to send it somewhere on the backside. And so, you know, these are on the client side of the connection. That's all living here. There are also events that happen on the server side. And those are like, uh, you know, server connected, HTTP response. And so you can change all of that data based upon events. So there is so much more that we could talk about. We could go on for hours on every single one of these uh, types of uh, commands, comments, conditionals, variables. Um, we could go even more in depth on events, but I think I've, I've gone on long enough. And so we'll wrap this video. We'll do more iRules videos in the future. Hopefully this has been helpful and uh, we look forward to hearing from you on what kind of content that you would like to see in these Lightboard lessons, and we'll see you out there in the community.